Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up. We're in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also, the vanity ID for an even better Roku channel is Dwyer Sports Betting. Okay? Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a week ago, we had a fight, Mike Alvarado against Rushdan Pavotnikov. And at that time, I talked about the fact that Mike Alvarado, this is in the post-fight video, didn't do the things needed to stretch that fight out, to make that fight go the distance. And keep in mind, Alvarado was fighting in front of a very sympathetic crowd. This week, we had Bernard Hopkins against Carol Morat. Understand the fight was in the United States. Understand the crowd was sympathetic to Bernard Hopkins. But Bernard Hopkins knows boxing on a much deeper level, in my opinion, than does Mike Alvarado. Right? Hopkins seems to be in a sweet spot where his physical skills haven't completely deteriorated but he's old enough to have a certain experience level a certain wisdom that allows him to do things that only really a guy who knows the sport can do now at the end of this fight he's being interviewed and they ask him about Carol Morat winning many of the early rounds and Hopkins throws out a quote. I believe it's a window into his thought process. Right? And he said that that was by design. He threw out a bone on a string so the dog could follow it into a dark alley. Right? Hopkins wasn't phased that Marat was winning some of the early rounds. Hopkins was conserving his energy while he was figuring out his opponent. Right? Let me talk a little bit about footwork because it's impossible to think about this fight without considering it. Right? What makes good footwork? Let's just talk about it for a couple of minutes here. This is what I'm looking for when I'm judging a person's feet. I don't want a guy to come in too square. In other words, I don't want him to be facing his opponent head on. Because, of course, when your feet are together, it's easier to knock you over. Right? I prefer guys who come in with a side profile. Right? So they have a leg in back that's supporting them. Right? It's harder to have them lose balance. You can't tip them over, right? I also want a guy who is savvy enough to know how to move without crossing his legs. Again, if you cross your legs while you're moving, right? If your right leg crosses in front of your left leg and someone hits you at that moment, you're going to fall. And the minute you fall, it's a 10-8 round. Right? You know, assuming that you aren't dominant in the rest of the round. Right? So, guys with good footwork are coming in, right? Not square. And they're able to move without crossing their legs. Right? They also don't pick up their feet off the canvas in such a way where the other guy can read their feet. In other words, I know to move from here to there, I'm going to have to pick up eventually both my left leg and my right leg. But just understand, if you're in the ring with a savvy boxer like a Bernard Hopkins, and if he has linked your feet to your hands, understand when you pick up, if you're a right-handed fighter, when you pick up your right leg, right? If you pick it up too high, if you're trying to move it too far a distance, 
Hopkins is going to realize at that moment that you cannot, for balance reasons and leverage reasons, while your right leg is up in the air, throw your right hand with any kind of leverage or power. Right? He'll come in and he'll be able to disregard your right hand. Because even if the right hand lands on him, your feet aren't planted so that right hand's going to do any damage. Right? So that'll allow him to go about his business. Now let's talk about spacing too. Lead feet. Right? The goal in setting up your footwork is not to be in front of your opponent. In other words, you want your lead foot to be outside the other guy's lead foot, right? The best explanation of this I've come across, and the fight's on YouTube, is if you can track down the film of Floyd Mayweather against Hanaro Hernandez. And let me point out, in my opinion, Hernandez was one of the very best Mayweather ever fought. That's the guy Mayweather beat. That's the champion Mayweather beat to get his first belt. Right? Well, just by chance, the color commentator doing the fight was former heavyweight champion George Foreman. And Foreman spends much of the telecast talking about Mayweather's feet and how he is a natural fighter. And Foreman points out, that Mayweather skillfully has his lead foot on this side, right to the right of Hernandez's foot, when he's not throwing punches. So the angle has him out of harm's way. But then Mayweather picks up the foot and puts it on the left side of Hernandez's foot to be more in front of him when he is throwing punches. Right now, keep in mind, Mayweather. Unlike today's fighters, Mayweather fought for the title very early in his career, right? We're talking about within the first two years, Mayweather's fighting for the title. Understand, the guy he's in the ring with is the champion. And Mayweather, back then, in his early 20s, had his feet figured out in a way that I don't believe Manny Pacquiao has figured out today, right? So, getting back to Bernard Hopkins, understand Hopkins' footwork is just spectacular, right? Hopkins, the first round, is a great round. Not a lot of action happens, but Hopkins is looking at Murat. Hopkins is outside. Hopkins is too far away for Murat to land a jab. Hopkins is moving around the ring, forcing Murat to reset, just reading the kid's movement. Right? It's, it's a round that's kind of like Ali List in that first round, and I consider that one of the best rounds I've seen. Right? Now, under scorecards, maybe Hopkins is giving away the round. But understand, he's figuring out distance. He's figuring out angles. Right? That's what he's doing in that first round. That sets the tone on the fight. Because Hopkins, until we get to tough moments like the end of the ninth round, Hopkins is fighting when he wants to fight. Right? And understand, it's really on a level that a Mike Alvarado, right? A champion, a younger lion, even though Alvarado's 33, but he's younger compared to Hopkins, right? 15 years younger. A younger lion, like Mike Alvarado, can't control the pacing the way Hopkins is. Understand, Hopkins' footwork makes it such that Hopkins is jumping in when he wants. When he jumps in, Hopkins has balance, right? One of the keys to footwork is you want a guy who, with the feet in the right position, is able to shift weight, right? Can defend himself by just leaning back, 
right, doesn't have to have the fight disintegrate into a free swinging contest. Look at Vladimir Klitschko. He's throwing bombs and stuff like that, but because of his positioning in the ring, because of his technique, because of his balance on his feet, it never looks like Vladimir Klitschko is just free swinging. His legs are always in control. Well, Bernard Hopkins here is literally jumping in and using upper body movement and using his body, not even clinches. He's using his body to dictate the pace of the fight. You know, when he hops in at times, he knows Marat can't land his right hand. So he literally has his head tucked and he has his shoulder in against Marat. Right? Marat is completely frustrated. Hopkins also is a master, as I have argued here in too many videos to count, at punching you and then clinching you. Right? Hopkins' body positioning and his footwork really allow him to tie up Marat and get Marat out of his rhythm the entire fight. It's not the punches Hopkins is throwing. It's the positioning. It's the ability to roll with punches. It's the defense. It's the ability to put his body up on Karo Morat's body and to smother Morat's footwork. Right? That's how a 48 year old guy is able to operate as the IBF light heavyweight champion right now. Understand Hopkins, based on what he did as a middleweight, really has been a Hall of Famer based on merit right for at least 15 years right Bernard Hopkins now is actually working on a second Hall of Fame career right he fought Felix Trinidad not too long after 9-11 in 2001 folks understand the reason why he was the opponent for Felix Trinidad is that Hopkins already had established himself as a multi-year middleweight champion. And Trinidad was looking for legitimacy in the middleweight division. Right? Hopkins was already the standard. Back when he fought Trinidad in 2001. Well, right now it's late 2013. And Bernard Hopkins, of course, has been light heavyweight champion multiple times. He just defended the title against the number one contender. Understand, the way the fight goes is Morat jumps out to the numerical lead on CompuBox. Then it's Hopkins who dominates the last 40% of the fight. Right? It's the old guy who wears out the young guy. And it's a pacing fight. Morat like Richland Provotnikov, likes to come forward. So what you have is a situation where Hopkins is using footwork so Murat can't just dive in. Then, of course, Hopkins is deciding when to dive in. And when he dives in, he dives in in a way where one of Murat's hands is already neutralized. In other words, he, he comes in like this. Murat can't hit him on this side. Right? Also, Bernard is turned to the side, so when he jumps in and ducks, 50% of Murat's game is gone. And Murat is actually an advanced fighter. Murat's a world-class opponent. But Bernard Hopkins is at that age where he can beat you with things like foot speed, upper body movement, smothering. Your offense, not even having hands up to block it. He doesn't have to do that anymore, folks. He can just hide. He's studied you, so he understands based on your positioning. 
that you can throw a left hand or at times a right hand. He's also coming in and hitting you and then grabbing you right away. So he wins the exchange and he gets a chance to rest. So this fight's one of the top performances I've seen this year. It had its rough moments. Right? Don't kid yourself. The end of the ninth round, Hopkins is hurt. He's up on the side of the ropes. I'm sure he did not anticipate getting hit with the shots that he got hit with. Right? But if you just look at who's dictating the pace of the fight, who's able to back the other fighter up, Who's able to turn the other fighter? Who's dictating the footwork? All of the answers are Bernard Hopkins, right? It's the last 40% 40 40 of this fight where Hopkins separates himself from not just Carol Morat, but from a lot of younger champions like Mike Alvarado, who, God bless him, can't pace himself like this. This is the deep end of the pool. This is the deeper end of the sport. Right? Bernard Hopkins is at a stage where there's an economy of movement. He's not wasting too much of it. There's an understanding of the distance of the fight. So he's in there and he's giving away multiple rounds early. Not just one round, but multiple rounds early. Fully confident in his ability to deconstruct the other fighter and to win the last 40% of the fight. Right? Really a great performance. A lot goes on in boxing between punches. This fight is exhibit number one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, too, that it's really interesting how Hopkins is able to lead not only with power shots, but with double power shots. There are times in this fight where Hopkins leans forward, throws a left hook, and then comes back and throws another left hook, right? You know how some fighters are timid. They need to touch you with a jab before they throw power shots. <coughs> Think Vladimir Klitschko. That's not Bernard Hopkins. Right? This guy's leading with power shots in ways that are creative and are catching world-class opponents like Carol Murat unprepared. Let me also talk about pacing just for a second. Compare and contrast Hopkins to Nathan Cleverly. Right? Cleverly is a guy who really needs his athleticism to overwhelm you. Right? The, the rounds are high volume rounds. Bernard Hopkins, by contrast, and I know he threw more punches than Carl Morat in this fight, but Bernard Hopkins, by contrast, isn't trying to out volume you. Rather, what he's doing is outthinking you. Right? All the way down to technique, body movement, clinches, non-clinches where he ties you up. You know, he has you with your back against the ropes. Later, you have him with his back against the ropes. And he's comfortable in the corner of the ring. Different level fighter, obvious Hall of Famer. The thing with Bernard, as I said before, is we have to ask ourselves, since he's beaten, Antonio Tarver at light heavy. Since he beat a previously unbeaten Kelly Pavlik. Since he beat Tavoris Cloud. Since he beat Winky Wright. All of this post middleweight. Right? At a certain point, we're going to have to start to look at this post middleweight body of work as a Hall of Fame career. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.